Let's now speak to our national reporter, Paul Hawkins, who is at the scene and may be able to give us some more details on what the police are saying. Paul. Yeah, I'll give you just a few more details in just a moment, Alex. Uh, I, I would say that what I've been hearing from people here in Greenford, and I've been here since 6am, correlates exactly with what Stephen has been saying. Really, uh, 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 someone who was all over the community playing his accordion outside Greenford Station, just there behind me, been speaking to shops there, people there knew him. Even if they didn't know his name, they knew who he was and they would chat to him, they would find out he was really friendly. He'd also be playing the accordion outside uh, Tesco's at the Hoover Building just down the road, really close to... Uh, to, to where uh, the paramedics treated him uh, yesterday. Now, in terms of the crime scene, that is still cordoned off. We heard from the police uh, earlier on. Uh, they are continuing their investigation. We've seen forensics teams uh, scouring the area, taking pictures, gathering information. Uh, what we do know is that where he came to rest was 75 yards from where the attack took place. Now, police have released uh, uh, an image of a suspect that they uh, want to speak to in connection with this incident. Uh, he was seen fleeing the scene armed with a knife. Uh, he was wearing grey shorts, a dark coloured t-shirt, a white baseball cap and white patterned builder style gloves. Now if anyone knows who he is, indeed if he is watching this, they are urging him to get in touch with the police in connection with this incident. He was seen fleeing the scene armed with a knife. Uh, now, in terms of uh, Thomas O'Halloran himself, we, as Stephen was saying, a, a real pillar of the community, in this part of Greenford, we know that he used to come into shops like this, get his scratch card, his wife would go in and buy it for him, he'd wait outside in his mobility scooter, and then he would come inside to bakeries like this. This is uh, the bake station, this is one of the places where Thomas used to come, although he was actually known by a different name. We can actually speak to uh, the manager uh, Rustam, uh, now hi Rustam, you okay? I'm fine, thanks. So yeah, are you all right if we just speak to you while, while you're working? Yeah, is that all right? Not yeah, not yeah. Um, uh, now everyone's, you know, been paying tribute to Thomas this afternoon, but you actually knew him as, as Terry. Terry, yeah. Most of us in the community, we've known him for Terry. I've I've known him since knee height, and uh, yeah, Terry was his name. I literally found out today that he was called Thomas. Yeah. But then the picture confirmed it when I saw that picture of him on the, the red mobility scooter. So it's very sad. Well, yeah, how did you feel when you found out? Because you, you told me that you've grown up with him, right? Yeah. From when you were little. Yeah, so I've seen him in the community for like the last 15 years. And it's, it's just sad to know that someone would take his life over a bit of money or whatever it was. But he wouldn't hurt a fly, man. He was a very nice, genuine guy. And it's just sad news. Very sad. Yeah, well, tell us a bit, little bit more about him. Because, you know, unfortunately, yeah. you know, people like myself didn't get to meet. So when I was younger, I, rem I remember him having a three-wheeler car. It was very distinctive, so he used to come out, start joking about, start laughing. We were like the local bakers who would come in for his bread and his breakfast. He'd go next door for like his drinks, his scratch cards, whatnot. So I, if you lived in Greenford, it's, you're guaranteed like you must have seen him. Yeah. yeah. And he used to pay the xylophone quite recently. He used to say his pension it wasn't enough for him, and he, he wanted a bit of extra money, whatnot. So he paid the xylophone like in uh, the evenings. But it's, yeah. it's very sad. And we're hearing that he also used to raise money for charity. He was raising money for Ukrainians. Yeah, yeah well. exactly. So yeah, so he was he was a very charitable person as well. And uh, yeah, man, he used to do a lot for the community. Yeah. It was is, that, is that your fries that just yeah, needs yeah, switching off? Is it? Sorry about that. Yeah, that's 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 one of the things with live TV. He's just going to check his fries at the moment. But yeah, and I mean, but just shocking just to hear what happened. Yeah, literally, I found out this morning. I wasn't uh, fortunate enough to watch the news yesterday, and uh, it's, it's a big shock. It's a massive shock because we see him every single day. He's like an active member of the community, all is about. So it's just very sad to know what's happened, man. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, did, and um, we understand that his wife used to wait outside the shop and. Uh, or his, his wife would go into the shop and buy the scratch card while he would wait outside as yeah, well. He was, he was married as well, yeah? Because he wasn't able to walk, so his wife used to do most of the walking. When it came to like going inside the, the local off-license or like even inside, he would always send his wife inside. And uh, yeah, they used to buy scratch cards every day. And as a joke, I used to say to him, when you win, it's going to be like 50-50, what or not. So, so that was literally last week.